Hey y'all, this is TCA Gaming, and in this video I'm going to go over one consignment card. I'm going to show you guys a binder that I just picked up full of raw cards. Then we're going to open up some Surging Sparks as well as talk about it. So let's start off with the consignment card. Just one. We've got an Umbreon and or Darkrai, Umbreon and Darkrai GX. On the Japanese side, it looks like it comes from Tag Team GX All Search. I believe there's another version of this that was similar to the one we got from the promos, like the 10 promos, and it's like way more expensive is some kind of promo thing but anyways this isn't the alt art this is just the regular one but um yeah that's it for consignment and if you guys are looking for quick links to my ebay or even places like probstein uh, zng psa vault football pete uh, old school pokemon that kind of stuff their ebays uh that stuff's actually down in my description now i cleaned up my codes and it's not the most beautiful thing but it should be fairly straightforward and then there's also a link for my link tree that just kind of takes you to all the, like the little bubble buttons as well but if you ever look for codes there, um, and the codes are down there. I've got them for a few different places, including PSA. PSA's code is now active, TCA25. If, you, if you're if you submitting for the first time, it's just for first time users, uh, you use TCA25 and you can get 25 bucks off. But anyways, we'll jump into the, the video itself. Um, this collection, uh, the guy reached out to me, said that he had it, pulled all the stuff from the pack. It was packed fresh, beautiful condition. And I was like, if that's the case, then we should probably have it graded. Um, but uh, I saw a few red flags right off the bat. Some of you, you guys could probably spot it even from the camera. Like if you look at the backside here, the card that's on the backside of this Blastoise obviously has edge wear. And, you know, I kind of told him that. I was like, you know, if this is, you know, one of the cards... If this is like the rest of them, then it's probably going to, um, you're probably not going to want to submit these. But if you'll send them my way, I'll let you know what's going on. He had no clue, you know, what Shadowless was. It's kind of astounding to think that there's still people out there with collections that are this old, that have literally Shadowless base set in there. So, I mean, they were in, in the very beginning. And, the, like, they don't know what they have. Like, it's just something that sat in a binder, and maybe they found it after you know 25 years I mean, it's just 24 25 years depending on i guess how old, i don't know how old you would have been i guess uh if you were my age you know you would have been 10 because i was 9 or 10 right right as this stuff was coming out because fossil ended up coming out at the very end of 99 i want to say pre-release was in august but anyways it was still pretty cool i told him just send it my way and i'll, I'll let him know what i think uh, i went through all the cards and pretty much everything is kind of like in five six max condition there's a few non hollows that might be a little bit better than that but really nothing uh too worth grading like i thought for sure the blastoids would be worth grading for him but after you take out the grading fees and everything else there wasn't a whole lot of difference between what the raw card was bringing and what like a five would bring you know once it was graded especially when you take out the ebay fee uh, or not the ebay fee but the grading fee and so i told him i was like you know i can submit these if you really want me to but uh, I, I can't guarantee that you're actually going to get any more money and you're actually, you're still going to be charged for the grading fee itself. Plus there's additional time. So I made him a couple different, I made him, I made him an offer on the whole thing and he just went ahead and took that. And I think that was the best for him. I'm probably still going to grade some of them just because of what they are. And I don't like selling raw cards that are under $300. Most of you can probably understand that if you've ever sold on eBay, I'd rather have something that's graded. If it's going to be like graded a four, I'd rather have it, you know, in a case where it's already been assigned that four condition rather than me saying, hey, this is in very good condition having to deal with that customer. So he had some Japanese cards too. You can see it's got a swirl there on the, the Blaine's Charizard. A couple more hollows here. It was cool to see the Shadowless in here. I'm going to skip through a few of these pages. Now, this was nice. I got to see a first edition Squirtle. Again, it's about, you know, six condition, may, maybe a little bit more. But you can see right there, it has that first edition stamp, which really increases the price. See, it's got whitening across the top and around the sides. Yeah, it's probably not even a six. I think the first there was a first edition Dragonite. This card's kind of wavy there. But, you know, looking at this binder, he had an Air Diglett, so that was neat. Usually, I'm pretty sure, I thought these come out of the starter deck, so usually these come in sets of four. But to not see any duplicates, really, of pretty much anything, uh, that was surprising. I was wondering if, you know, he had more cards in a stack somewhere, and he could easily have first edition cards like the Squirtle or Charmander or Pikachus that would add up in value really quickly. Like, that's a Red Cheeks Pikachu. It's unlimited, though. So not a ton of value there. But it was still really nice to, to buy a collection like this if you do have... 
your old binders or you want to sell raw cards. Uh, most of the time I'm not interested, but older stuff I'm more interested in, even though it's a whole lot less liquid than the newer stuff. But feel free to reach out, and even if I don't buy your collection or don't offer to buy, I can send you on to somebody else who might. All right, next up we have Surging Sparks. This set really surprised me. I, I was not expecting it to go up in price like it did. I mean, it, it's eerily similar to me of Vivid Voltage, but... You know, whatever. The Pikachu V Max. I mean, that thing was so expensive when it first came out. I think the Pikachu in here is worth several hundred dollars if you get like the top one, which I'm not even sure which one's the top one. The boxes were sub 100 when I put in my pre order numbers. And now, from what I can see, they're like 150. So we're going to see what happens. Uh, if you're looking to buy in to some surging sparks packs for the live tonight they are available and on the website now this is i'm pretty sure the artwork is gonna be a lot better than vivid voltage so that that probably was not a fair comparison but i did it so <laughs> yeah the pikachu v max that people were going crazy over freaking out and it was it was very expensive in the i don't know what it is now i remember selling a nine for like I want, I want to say over 200 bucks. But the tens, I want to say were like 600 maybe. Maybe more. It's been, it's been a while since Vivid Voltage. Right at four years ago, I guess too, about, would be about the time we were getting Vivid Voltage back. That was one of the last sets that you could get into PSA and have gotten back. Tetsugi. Tetsugur, Tetsugiri. Nice little, I guess that's a full art illustration rare. I don't think that's a special illustration rare, or is it? Not centered well. <laughs> we'll say that much. Okay, we'll see what we get out of here. I hope we get a cool looking Pikachu. Who doesn't want the Pikachu? A low on Executor EX. He gets a lot of love for a coconut tree. Definitely not a flaming dragon, but I mean, I guess it could be, it could be an electric mouse. Surging sparks. Now, if you're also if you if you're not really into the modern stuff, I do have some vintage this up. I think we're down to three heavy red logos. Which again, the heavy packs they're going to have the hollow for the fossil boost packs. But it's the non-hollows that have the more expensive non-holographic rare. Surfer. And I don't know. I think I've only sold one of those. But nobody's wanted to open any of the packs live. Which kind of makes sense. There is some value in the variation keeping it sealed. I know that there are several people who collect all variations of heavy packs. And they want to have an art set. Killawa Trail. Here's that bird. I guess... Uh, that one should be in here, be an electric bird. How does that work in the sky? Kind of like a Zapdos. Is Zapdos? Does the thunder is thunder effective, super effective against the Zapdos? Clobopus. I almost skipped right over it. There's a lot of other stuff that people are talking about now too. I can't even remember the name of it. That um, the next set with the EV Elite Trainer that sold out on Pokemon Center. It's going to have like the Sylveons or the EV Lucians. You have Sylveon, Moonbreon. It's a pretty much going to be an Umbreon with a moon behind it. And then they're going to have, you know, one of those hats, which I don't understand the hat. Hydreigon EX, but people seem to like them. Can't really see it in there, but he's wearing a hat. Nothing there. So far, not too bad on this box. At least I don't think. You guys can let me know. I mean, no Pikachus. That's what we want. We want some Pikachus. I need to make uh, binder collections again. They just take up so much space. And then I, I kind of get bored with binder collections after a while. Like I love filling in the spaces. There's just something... Very calming. 
to completing a set. Front, back, fill in all the spaces. Although I used to put like the reverse hollows on the back side, it wasn't it wasn't as satisfying doing it that way because whenever you had something like this, a slacking EX, it doesn't have a reverse hollow. So then you have this almost looks like an empty spot on the back side. We need the big Pikachu hit. Of the boxes that I've bought. Ooh, that looks nice. Double gold star Milo tick. That's got to be a special illustration rare. <clears throat> I don't even know what I was saying. Of all the um, Surging Sparks booster boxes that I bought, most of them come in pretty good condition, but I was kind of worried today. Today's like the first day it's rained in a while. Oh, Cool, I didn't even know there was a Sylveon in this set. And I, had to go, and I always have to pick up my pallets. So I go and meet the transfer truck. They load it on the back of my truck. It's raining. I, got, I drive back here and I have to unload it while it's raining. Thankfully, it wasn't raining that hard. And I can back my truck up within about eight feet of the door. So it only takes, you know, 10, 15 minutes to unload everything. Because if I'm just not sorting it as I'm bringing it in, I'm just like plopping it down in the floor. Last pack, got a slacking EX. That's pretty cool. The box felt pretty good. Let's see. We got three, six, nine, twelve. We got 15 hits, including. That's that's got to be the big hit, right? The Milotic. Looks pretty sweet. Anyways, guys, hope to see you tonight during the live. Starts at 8 p.m. Uh, we did have a game. I thought it was going to be a little bit later. However, the games got moved because of the election. Uh, I know many of you will probably be up doing something with the election, watching it. But uh, if you haven't voted, go vote. Get your uh, At least get your vote out there, cast for who you think should be the president. And um, maybe I'll see you tonight during the live if you have questions. Even if you don't want to open up product with us, you can come and ask me. And Generally, I can keep up with the chat. I don't have that many people in my chat to where I can't keep up with uh, the questions that are being asked unless we're doing a giveaway or something like that and it just kind of flips out. But you guys have a great week and I'll see you in the next video.